Hey, mate, another day. Here we go. Monday. Uh, a little later today, but look, we've got people ready in the comments. Mm -hmm. Everyone's everyone's here, ready to go. Um, and that's what we like to see. Yeah, SB. SB, what about a real name, man? Let's go with some real names here. I like real names, SB. Um, yeah. People are ready though, and I'm excited. Listen, I'm coming from uh, Boston again. I'm in I'm in the workspace, so I actually I rented out a, uh, a conference room today. So I got this whole thing to myself. I got the little headphones in. Uh, I think I think it's working well. Have you been on like a work retreat or something for the last? Mm, yeah, mate. Last week we went to my boss's house. Uh, my boss is his name's Ed Baker. But Ed uh, Ed worked at Facebook is the head of growth uh, at Facebook. He took Facebook from a million users to a billion users. That was his, uh, that was his department uh, growth. And then he, he went to, uh, he decided to leave Facebook and went to a small company that was doing limousines. And uh, his parents were like, why would you leave Facebook to go to a limousine company? Uh, anyway, it ended up changing its name from Uber cab to Uber and, uh, he became the head of growth at Uber and so took that to a, a billion dollar company as well. So uh, I think he proved his parents wrong. But yeah, so he's got he's got some houses, let's say, and he's got some snowmobiles. And we went we went up and did some work last week at one of his houses. And and then in the afternoon, we went out shredding on the snowmobile. So, yeah, a little bit of a work retreat. Looked awesome. Looked awesome. Glad you had a good time. Um, yeah, yeah. Snowmobiling. Mate. Mate, the tech world's a different world, man. Different world, the tech world. You know, we're we're in the swimming world, and it's small, but the tech world is big. Jeez, uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of excited. I'm fun. It's fun. A um, lot of swimming, a lot of swimming coming up. A lot of swimming going on. A lot of things happening. Um, a lot of, lots to talk about today. And a lot of, a lot of people in the comments that I want to get to as well. We've got a friend uh, from from Portugal today uh, joining us. So I'm gonna bring him in real quick. Yeah. yeah, how are you doing? Hi, Brett. Hi, Brett. Hi, Sonny. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You're, you're good now, Jao. You're really good. Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, really a uh, fan of the show and a fan of your work as well uh, as, as coaches and uh, sharing, sharing swimming with the rest of the world, for sure. We, we love connecting the world. I think that's what our show has done more than any other podcast out there or or you know we we love connecting people so this is awesome that you're in here tell us a little bit about yourself real quick uh well i'm a swimmer from portugal from a small team in uh, almada the other side of uh, lisbon and right now i'm studying still swimming not a very fast uh, swimmer but a really big uh, fan uh, probably a little bit too addicted to swimming, some would say. And uh, yeah, I'm also in college. That's where I'm at right now, taking a degree in physics engineering. And yeah, I guess that's that's about it. Physics engineering. Uh, Sonny, did you ever study that? I didn't get past like score at 17. I definitely don't have a degree in anything <laughs> near as high brain power mm. as physics or engineering. So good on you, yeah. Well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think you want to do with a degree like that? Well, uh, my first option getting into college was uh, biophysics. Um, really, I really do enjoy the uh, human body, and I would like to apply you know, my knowledge to performance. But I also uh, really enjoy medical physics right now, and it's a field that's getting a lot of opportunities in Portugal. So... That's a possibility to explore as well. Yeah, Good but I would like to. I like to get uh, still connected to swimming as as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Listen, you're a, you're a, you're a smart kid. You're a swim nerd. You love swimming. Uh, you compete, <laughs> but um, you know there's life after swimming, and I think that's awesome that you're you're doing that for yourself and setting that standard. Um, you know, a lot of people come to America to do that, to get a degree, but you can you can obviously do it in, in all these other countries like like you're doing in Portugal. So, um, yeah, tell us uh, tell us about the uh, event that you just competed in. Well, I was competing at uh, Arena Lisbon International Meeting. 
that uh, happened this weekend. Uh, it's uh, it was I think over ten editions right now, uh, and we received a lot of the a lot of international swimmers. Mainly, I guess the biggest names were the uh, Italian Italian national team with Moresi, Frigo, uh, Stefano Di Cola, uh, Federico Bordiso, uh, Silvia Di Pietro. And we also had our big, big national names competing from the Uribe, world junior champion, uh, Miguel Nascimento, national record holder in the 53, and uh, our Olympians, Gabriel Lopes, Demilo Lu, uh, Diana Duran. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, the fastest edition for sure. Uh, and it was really, really great to be being there and being able to to watch, uh, watch the all of the swims for sure. What did First you race? I, what, what were your what's your events and and what's your best times? Oh, uh, I swam the fifty fly. I went a twenty seven three eight, and the one fly I went a one or two, and the fifty three I went fifty six four. I guess, as I said, not a very fast swimmer. But yeah, like I still enjoyed swimming. myself. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. That's what keeps me humble, I guess. That's what I used. I get to tell my coach. Yeah. I, I actually went through some of the results of the meet and I, I saw like meet records were falling in almost every event, um, you know, by the Portuguese swimmers, by the Italian swimmers, uh, even some and British also, swimmers. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Manchester team went. Uh, my good friend Jamie Ingram won the hundred butterfly in fifty-two-seven. Yeah. What was what was, was your favorite race to watch? Probably the one fly. Yeah. Uh, between him, oh, the one fly or the one free, but the one fly between him and Diogo. Diogo went out faster than him, but did he had a, a, an amazing second hundred water to start the second fifty, and he held up the pace right lovely. I was seeing that his best time was 52.1 from the Commonwealth last year, yeah. and he went to 52.7. So in January, uh, probably setting up for a, a great season as well. And in the 103, Miresi threw down at 48.9. First time I saw someone swimming under 49 lives. So awesome. It was pretty nice as well. Yeah. Hey, well, listen, Joe, it's uh, great to meet you, man. I'm glad we could bring you in for a little minute and uh, catch up with you. Good luck with your swimming. Good luck with your education. And uh, thanks for joining us, man. Thank you, man. Uh, till next time. Thank you Ciao. so much. Ciao. All right, Sonny, we've got a, another guest in the wings. And this one is a, is a special friend of mine, uh, one of the best men you'll find in swimming, uh, a real leader and just a, a good person all around and, and a badass swimmer, mate. That's the, that's the other thing. So here we go. Let's bring him in. Boom. What's up, man? Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Good morning. All the way from Cali, man. How's it going, Jamal? Oh, dude, you know, it's going well. Uh, times are a little bit different than when I was an age group swimmer. Uh, so 7 a.m. starts are, are a bit like the crack of dawn these days, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Um, look, it's it's an important month, I think, uh, in terms of uh, American history. You know, it's uh, Black History Month, first of all, but it's also a chance for us to kind of shine a light on uh, some special athletes like yourself, man, who are doing incredible things. So I appreciate you joining us. Give us an update on some of the things that are going on in your life, man. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, just on the Paralympic swimming side, um, you know, I think we're all just kind of hoping the best for the athletes and the sport at this point. Uh, you know, if, if anyone doesn't know, just kind of uh, our section of sport experience so some a, a troubling situation. I say that not to uh, not to belittle or discredit anyone's experience, but uh, so that's that man. Just just kind of hoping that our administration is able to get into a place where the athletes can really come to trust them again. That's going to be super important. Me personally, uh, dude, my eyes are set on world championships this year. You know, always a three step plan, right? Make the team, make the final, <laughs> get your hand on the wall. So. Just uh, yeah. showing up every day, you know, yeah. 
showing up every day, just uh, doing what I can for that, man. Uh, that's really how things are going for me personally, competitively in the pool. And then uh, outside the outside of my competition pool, uh, the Swim Up Hill Foundation is really doing great, dude. We're on a tour right now, going to 100 elementary schools all of 2023, uh, giving out over... Yeah, right? <laughs> Clap out of Hell yeah. Up. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll give out uh, just over, I want to say about 40,000 uh, new children's books called Sammy Swims. And we'll also be looking to enroll those children and their families in free swim lessons. Uh, so so that's, shoot, dude, that's just kind of like the 10,000 foot view of, of what mm. my Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 are looking like. <laughs> Uh, Sonny, man, you and I are always thinking that we're doing some things for swimming, you know, some positive things. But you know, I, then I see what Jamal's doing. It's like, oh, man, I'm not doing enough. This guy's always doing something that's <laughs> taking it to another level, you know? Oh, it's, it's insane to see. And, you know, I think we can all do our little bit. But as long as everyone's doing a little bit, good things happen. But then there's obviously standouts that do a lot. And, uh, you know, we have to be very thankful for them guys and you know, yeah. it's it's great to see all that stuff you're doing, Jamal, while also being an elite international world class athlete at the same time. You know, it's no easy task to juggle things, you know. Yeah, yeah. man, I appreciate that. And my respect, dude, the swimsuit guy. I didn't know I was going to, you know, have uh, such a <laughs> great company on the call this morning. So uh, I'm definitely, definitely a fan of your views, bro. Um, I yeah. think, you know, the kind of niche and, uh, brand that you've carved out for yourself is, is not only smart but also really helpful uh to swimmers to the aquatics community so definitely definitely uh respect to you man cheers yeah. Jamal. I, I don't know if actually um you know you guys are even aware but we we have one like common person that's sort of like intertwined within all of us i think jamal knows who i'm talking about but um you know a guy from my hometown lewis clifford it was the first time I actually ever contacted Brett. I was helping work with Lewis, and I actually asked Brett. This was three or four years ago now, and I said, "Brett, I've got. I'm working with a sprint guy. Can I get some advice?" And Brett jumped on a call with us and chatted with us. He also is the guy that I don't know. I think really pushed Jamal into, you know, yeah. where he is right now. And uh, he's one of my best mates. Uh, he's recently engaged. So we all have this guy from Essex, Lewis Clifford, who's like an intertwining factor to us all being on this call right now. You know, I think without Lewis, I wouldn't be talking to Brett and Jamal might not be here either. So um, mm. it's pretty crazy stuff. Dude, that's, that's very true for my part, man. Shout out to Lucky Lou. Love that kid, dude. It was 2018. First time I met Lewis, he had come down to train with the victory. It was the uh, morning alarm. <laughs> but, uh, come down to train with this train with Wilma, man. And um, yeah, outside of Wilma, that dude was like maybe kind of the second person in 12 years to just kind of call me out a little bit on my disability, um, call me out kind of just on the way my body functions, what he was seeing happening on camera and mm. uh, really make a strong suggestion like, oh, mate, you know, dude, if your legs don't work, I got a buddy that's blind. I got this. You should check out the Paralympics. Um, so yeah, no, Lewis was definitely pretty crucial in, in moving that forward. And once upon a time, he said I would owe him 10%. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not exactly sure how you break up 10% of someone's career. but, <laughs> but, uh, well, but uh, Keep giving him shout outs, man. That's what he needs. It's good. You know, it's good. It's good. Nah, it's um, but well, let's get into a little bit of kind of current events. And maybe you can kind of shed some light on some of this stuff yeah. too. Uh, Sonny, uh, what, what's going on in the world of swimming that we need to kind of just chat about real quick before we open it up to the questions here? Well, I mean, I, I know Nate does a great job with his swim spam. So uh, some of the things he mentioned there was Cam McAvoy's back racing, and he's looking really, really good. Like yeah. he swam a 22-0 long course 50 freestyle um, at an Australian meet on the weekend. I think state champs. And it just looked unbelievable. Like he just mm -hmm. looked at his best. And, you know, you know, Cam McAvoy, like if he's at his best, he's a threat to everyone out there. You know, he's a threat to Dressel, Popovich, Chalmers. So, you know, he's at a year out. A any thoughts on Cam? Like, uh, I don't know if you know him or, or how well yeah. you know him even. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I had a 
I had a small, small part in his coming back. You know, I'm, I was always a big Cam McAvoy fan and I could never figure out why he disappeared or why he fell off. And I kind of reached out to him just personally of like, hey, man, where you at? What's going on? And, you know, he just wasn't in the place where he wanted to jump back into it quite yet. And I think just through nudges and just through some, you know, some, uh, you know, some communication between him and I, you know, I, I actually started sending him some workouts to kind of get him back in the pool again, get his get his love for it. I think he was just disillusioned with the way he was training. He's a real smart, cerebral guy, like super smart. Mm-hmm. He started to he started to think about it again. He started to love kind of the work I was sending him, and then I kind of just let him go. Like you know, all right, Cam, you're on your own now. Like go go figure this out. And he just started to create these workouts for himself, and then he, I think he ended up finding a coach, and so. Uh, he just found his love for it again. And Jamal, you know what that's like, man. When, yep. you, when you fall out of love of it and, and then all of a sudden it's, something's reignited and, and you can you can connect with something again, it, it kind of brings your love back, right? Dude, 100%. And uh, I even remember just one of your recent shows that you were talking about uh, who's the GOAT, right? Um, um, especially uh, amongst the uh, sprinter circle. I think that's one of the most amazing things about someone, especially when we talk about sprinters, dude, like – it's a lot like martial arts in the sense that, uh, you know, kind of once you're an expert, you never become any less deadly, right? Uh, so, no, I, I think it'd be amazing to see Cam back, uh, dude, just back competing at the highest level. Of course, we all know what it's like to fall in love with the sport. If you're not in love with it, dude, that's when that's when people leave it. It's not an easy job. None of this is easy. Uh, and and I, I usually don't necessarily get a king's ransom, right, to, to kind of make you really stick out when you're not loving it, which is in some ways a great thing, honestly. So, yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm excited. And, uh, Brett, like I said, the last time I was just tuned in, dude, the way you were talking about the fastest people who have ever swam in our sport, it's just really eye-opening, man, because uh, it just shows, again, there's like so many ways to skin the cat. There's so many ways to really air quote end up on top of the pyramid um, at any given time. Yeah. Hey, you know, this is a good question for you. And, and maybe, you know, maybe Cam's looking at it this way too, is like when, when you see people that are swimming fast and you see people that are, are doing, doing some things at the highest level, how do you take parts of what they're doing and incorporate into what you may need? How do you analyze, like, where's my deficiencies? Where's my weaknesses? Or what could I take from, a, you know, a Caleb Dressel and incorporate into what, I, what I'm doing? Do you, do you do it that way? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, definitely got to shout out to the team right now. Um, shout out to Wilma. Shout out to the guys that we train with. Uh, they're all, you know, these. Thank God for TikTok, Instagram, all these things, right? We have all this video, right? Like video is really every every sports person in the world knows you gotta watch film. Um, so just being able to have access to film, uh, especially like breaking it down frame by frame, uh, that dude, that's a game changer. Uh, and then even beyond that, just being a constant student of the sport, like I said, I personally think of someone a lot like martial arts. Um, and that said. I'm not sure that there's really a best style. I think that there are some really amazing fighters slash swimmers out there, some true masters. And, uh, yeah, man, when the time comes along, like, for example, right now, one of my favorite guys, he always is, but Vlad Morozov. Uh, mm. I know sometimes people forget to mention Vlad in the in the list of, like, most elite swimmers, uh, sprinters ever, especially, you know, just because of uh, how things have gone at the Olympics and, you know, that is what it is, but the dude is still nothing to be trifled with, never has been, never will be, and a pretty small guy, right? So, like, how does a small guy compete against people, no disrespect a lot, uh, but, but how does he <laughs> compete against people, you know, six, 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 seven across 50 meters, right? And they already have so many inches on them, especially once you add an arm length. So, uh, yeah, man, I, well, we constantly study, dude, and, and I already yeah. know you're the exact same way, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Study's important. I love, and that's why I love Sonny's, uh, you know, his channel. I mean, he's putting swim stuff up all the time, Sonny. You, you, you're a big uh, believer in that too, right? Absolutely. I uh, I don't think everyone learns the same. Some people like, you know, studying video. Some people like studying literature. And, uh, you know, I think we can all share and help each other grow. So 
I don't think I'm the best coach or the most knowledgeable coach, but I think if I put a video out and explain why I'm doing a session, how that session is going to help. And, you know, there's coaches out there that can learn from that. And also I, I've learned so much from people like Brett and James, who are, who are very keen coaches, you know, to share what they're doing with their athletes. And I, I think if more coaches can be like that, it's it's the best. And, I, you know, I still remember there's some great stuff from Mike Bottom back in the early 2000s when he was making videos, you know, for like cassette tapes. And the same with Richard Quick used to do like uh, like VHS, you on know. The, it, like on there we go. Yeah. yeah. Like some of that stuff's still great. But I think so many coaches are so precious. Like the information they've got is, you know, they can't share it. And it's like, come on. You know, sharing is is what's going to make this sport grow and how we can make it, you know, better and faster. And I think that's really what's happened in the last 10 years, why we're still able to move forward with world records so regularly compared to like track and field, where it takes a freak like Usain Bolt to break a world record. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that, well, that's what I try and do is what Brett tries to do. And I think we all try well, and do. I say this every week, man, and Jamal's no uh, exception here. We're all on any question, you know, come up there and ask us questions, man, because there's so much information on that platform. Um, yeah, I, I'm always promoting that, but uh, I just think it's great. That's why, that's why I'm in it. <laughs> I have any questions. Uh, yeah, Brett, Jamal's I'm on curious, there. Man, what's, what's your take on... Uh... You've seen a lot, dude. You've seen a lot, and you're still very much in the sport, um, you know, wearing a few hats, quite frankly. So mm -hmm. what's your take on the current climate? Obviously, you know, that was the longest quad there's ever been five years, and this is the shortest quad there's ever been. Really, you know, two and a half years, if we're just being frank about it. Um, I don't know, man. How, how do you think that's kind of affecting the field of athletes coming up for Paris? You know, it's hard. It, we just saw, and this is part of the conversation that I wanted to transition into, we see an athlete like um, Zach Apple just retiring on the weekend, man. Zach Apple, uh, look, he, he accomplished everything that he wanted to accomplish in his in his swimming career. So I'm never going to tell a man to not walk away when he does that. I, I get frustrated when people don't uh, reach their potential. And Zach, Zach reached his potential. Olympic champion, you know, uh, world champion, you know, did it all, right? Swam 47 in the 100 freestyle. This kid walked on basically onto our team. He he committed to Western Kentucky or Eastern Kentucky or one of the Kentuckys, somewhere in the east or west, but uh, basically a small little town, right? Uh, but Zach walked onto our team basically with minimal scholarship at the time, and, and he was just a, a very average swimmer. And one of the things I said in my Instagram – about Zach, as I said, he came in with a walk-on mentality. And what that meant was his mentality was, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get where I need to be. And that's that's the mentality that you have, man, Jamal. I, I see that in you is like, whatever it takes, I'm going to do it to get there. And I'm, talk and I'm talking about whatever it takes in terms of whatever pain and agony I need to go through, whatever learnings I need to have, whatever information I need to gather, whatever work I need to do. I'm going to do it. And, and there's people like you and, and Zach that come along that are separators, right? Like they separate themselves with that type of mentality. So um, that's, that's what I see in, in a guy like Zach. Uh, yeah, look, Zach, Zach's only 25. And, and part of your question there, Jamal, was like, where's the landscape? Look, it bothers me anytime someone retires a year out of the Olympics. I mean, we're, we're a year away from Paris, man literally a year away from Paris. Like you don't think you can hang on for one year and, and do it again. Like, like, you know, I would be kicking myself a year out. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm not stopping now. Like I'll stop a year from now after Paris and then I might stop a, you know, I might have four gold medals to my name and, and then I can die a legend, you know, but so that's my mentality. But look, Zach was always the type of guy that was like, he was going to do all the work necessary that he needed to do. And when I mean all the work, he was at Indiana. He was in the distance lane at times. He's, he's probably swimming way more than I would ever make him swim at Auburn. Um, but he's getting results there. So, look, the burnout is real. The, the, the intensity is real. All that stuff. I'm not going to take any of that away. But anytime I see someone retire a year out, it just it breaks my heart. You know what I mean? Mm. I think, though, when you're swimming for, especially like a team like the USA, where just making a team is as hard as winning a medal. 
And, you know, Schumann, if he made the 100 free relay, he's almost guaranteeing a, a medal at least, you know, even if you just get that heat swim. But it's really hard for some people to do, as you said, he's an all-out kind of guy. And if he's not got the mental capacity to do that for one more year, he probably doesn't want to do it half-hearted. And that's something that I see with so many athletes. They're doing things half-hearted and they're the ones that are going to find this two and a half year cycle really hard because some people almost need like a, a year of downtime and then a year of like refocus and then a couple of years to work. Whereas the people that are going to succeed next year, are the guys that have given everything in these two and a half years, they didn't get that year of downtime or that time to party or whatever some people do. And, and that sort of mentality is real as well. Like people mm -hmm. are not giving it their all and they're the ones who are going to get beaten. Mm. Yeah, man, that's uh, no, that's that's definitely powerful. Uh, shout out to Zach Alpman. I, I had a chance, so we were both uh, representing, or we were both representing Speedo at the same time. So I had a chance to to meet Zach at, at a photo shoot or two. Um, really, just a cool guy, man. Honestly, uh, if you've never met him, he's what I would call a sleeper, man. You know, like mm. he's somebody if you meet him and you see him, you don't necessarily expect him to be as talented, as good, like, as he actually is, right? Obviously, it just goes without saying. He made the team. He's an Olympic medalist. Uh, but even that said, you know, like, seeing people, it's easy to sometimes put people in boxes. Dude. We're all guilty of it. So, yeah, I, in, in my in my opinion, that, that's a real stand-up, stand-up guy. But uh, what you were saying there, brother, just about hard work in this cycle, you know, um, I think another thing that's really going to separate here. Uh, and, and we're starting to see it more and more, right? Maybe not so much with who's making the team, but definitely with uh, who's getting medals, right, at the games. That experience factor, man, uh, especially once you get over the hump. Mm. I'm curious. What was it like for you guys once you, once you kind of got over that hump? I know recently I found myself having a freaking itch like an addict, dude. I've had mm. my – I've been having an itch. I want that – pressure right because you can mm -hmm. feel it in the air of mm -hmm. a major competition and uh it's tough because you really only get it you know in my opinion what i would say once a year right whether it's worlds or whether it's games uh well, well, what are your thoughts about just that environment and what it does to some and what it does to others yeah sonny so, sonny you go first man i got my thoughts here i i I, I think it's a real individual thing and it is a separator. Like uh, for some people, it's almost like a guaranteed second drop or, you know, whatever that means. And for some people, it's like the complete opposite. But I, I also just think some people really work differently based on what the lead ups look like. Like I know some athletes I've worked with loved the underdog mentality. They loved being back against the wall kind of written off and that's where they thrive. But if they go in like as favorite with like a, oh, you're guaranteed to win something, that really takes away. So that's something that, you know, I I think's real as well. Like just the, the lead up to the meets can be really, really detrimental, either good or bad. But I think the very best, they don't really care. Like it's, they're going to step up and they're going to get the job done. And I, I, I love it. You know, there's nothing like your heart rate just elevating because of where you are at, like, uh, that's great. And, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, for me, it was a longer journey. Like, I didn't make my first Australian Open uh, long course team until I was 25 years old. You know, that was my first Olympic team. That was my first Open team. I came back from America. I'd, I'd done my collegiate seasons. Uh, I did three seasons. I went back to swim pro. And I was just hungry to finally crack onto that national team. And it happened at the age of 25. So it's hard, it's hard for me to be judgmental of a guy like Zach, who, you know, maybe, maybe made his first national team at like 22 and then swam on that, you know, swam for America for three years, winning world championships, Olympic games. And by the time he's my age, he's, he's done, you know, so I, I get that too. But, you know, for me, it was like, when I got there, I didn't want it to end. I was going to milk my talent. I was going to milk my abilities. I wanted to be, I want to be around the best. You know, when I made my first team with Ian Thorpe and Grant Hackett and these guys, I'm like, I want to be on this team for as long as I can. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to travel with them. I mean, these guys were like rock stars back then. So I'm like, I felt like I was part of the band, you know? So I'm like, I just made it onto the band. I'm, I'm staying. So I was there 
I was there six years traveling the world and, and that was, I loved every second of that, you know? So yeah, it's, it's hard for me to be judgmental. Um, I just had a different perspective, but you know, also making the teams that you make Jamal making the U S team, it's no joke, man. It's, it's the most competitive team in the world, you know? So even the pressure of just getting onto that team itself is pressure packed, you know? So living with that pressure all year long and then, and then having to deal with the Olympic pressure and things like that, it's, it adds up on, you know? So, um, you know, yeah, I, I think that's kind of my ultimate answer is just everybody's perspective is going to be a little unique, you know? Yeah. No, no, that's uh, that's definitely powerful, man. Like I say, dude, any swimmers out there, Jamal Hill, my three-step formula, dude, always keep it simple. Number yeah. one, to make that team. <laughs> if you don't make the team, right, nothing else counts. Number yeah. two, we all been there. You got to make that final. And then, uh, dude, after that, just get your hand on the wall the fastest, right? Pretty simple. Yeah. So, yeah. Not yeah. easy, not easy, but uh, I love that, dude. Absolutely. Now, t talking about the future, uh, you know, let's go back to uh, Carmel, Carmel uh, High School, you know, and uh, Carmel, Carmel Swim Team. Um, they had some phenomenal performances over the weekend. And shout out to my college roommate, Nick Shackle, his daughter, Alex, is just one of the most uh, promising superstars uh, in in U.S. swimming right now. She is just tearing it up. Alex Shackle um, and her mother, Allie. Allie swam at Auburn. Nick, swam, Nick was a senior when I was a, a freshman. He was the captain of the team when we won our first national title. Allie was on the swim team. So, like, swimming history here. They're sitting in the stands now watching their daughter, who is now a superstar. Their oldest son is committed to Cal. He's going to the number one team in the country. So imagine, uh, you know, imagine coming from this swimming family and then producing these this, these talents that uh, the next generation of talent must be a pretty special feeling for them. Yeah, absolutely. Jamal, uh, what's your swimming background family-wise? You got any, any swimmers in the family or, you know, how did you end up swimming? Uh, dude, swimming background family. I have a great uncle who was a part of the Paralympic movement named Grover Evans. Um, okay. Grover Evans. Um, I'm sure he was the first something. I don't know exactly what. Uh, other than that, though, <laughs> nah, not really a real deep swimming background. Uh, my mom put me in mommy and me classes at 10 months old. I taught her how to swim some 20 years later. And that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much it, man. Like, my pops is from the Midwest, you know, so he knows what it's like swimming in those uh, in those rivers, uh, playing with those, uh, what do you call it, playing with those whirlpools that they get off the Mississippi and stuff like that. Mm. But, yeah, no, no, no real, like, competitive swimming background or I'm um, what you call a first gen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call a first gen, dude. What about you, Sonny? My dad loves golf. My, my, my dad started master swimming when I, I was about 20 and he was about 42 and he's, he's not great. Uh, he tries, but he's not great. But yeah, he <laughs> loves golf. He's much better at golf and he'd probably prefer if I played golf as well. He, he doesn't care. Like he never pushed me, but he's, he's as obsessed with golf as I am with swimming, which as you boys know, I'm pretty obsessed with swimming. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's go to a, let's go to a, a, a thought here. Um, question. So Black History Month, Jamal, what's your thoughts on kind of this next generation of phenoms coming through? We've got Crooks, uh, Leando. Crooks is uh, from yep. Cayman, Cayman, Cayman Islands. Islands, yeah, and then Leando's from Canada. Yep. And then uh, Bruard. Who's oh, Bruard? France. Johan Bruard, the uh, bachelor oh, guy from France. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, what's your thoughts, man? What are my thoughts? Dude? I hope we all got the same thoughts. Great. <laughs> we need more. My thoughts are we need more. Let's go. Dude, no, no. Seriously, seriously, just um no, dude. I think it's uh I think it's absolutely great. You know what I'm saying? Like uh even just last year at NCAAs, you know, the you know, you could still probably count the amount of black athletes competing at that meet across two hands. Um so just to see some standout performances from Leando Leando's had some great swims this year. Some good swims. I, I know he he had his eyes on some great swims. Crooks has definitely had uh some great swims this year. You know, obviously my homie David Curtis, dude, shout out to that yep. dude. He's uh mm -hmm. he's coming on the circuit. So I think it's awesome, man. I think um 
I think it's awesome, dude. Like, I don't even know what else to say other than obviously representation matters. You know, like these guys swimming and living their dream um, and, and just showing obviously what's possible is going to have ripple effects the same way that I like to imagine I'm having an effect on somebody's life that I never met the same way that we know for a fact, you know, and just speaking black history, right? Cullen and, and Maritza and, and, and Simone and, um, you know, Jim Ellis and, and all these other people have been drops in, in this uh, in kind of this ethnic bucket of swim. So, yeah, I think it's freaking great. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's tough. I wish I had a more deep response, but I feel like it's not that deep of a question. It's like, how do you feel about more black people being great at professional swimming? Yeah, I think it's a great thing. I, I hope this work continues to be pushed to higher and higher levels. I hope we continue to get more diversity in the sport. Um, you know, no human is literally a fish. So uh, in some way, we kind of all have the same capacity for success there. It's my two cents, dude. Well, it's interesting in America, you know, the, the big sport, big two sports in America are football and basketball, right? Yep. And And the black athlete dominates those two sports. So... In your mind, is the black athlete uh, superior, dominant to everybody else? I would say that in my mind, I think that we see these sports really dominated by black and really kind of like by black athletes. I don't, you know, superiority is, it just like gets real gray in there. So now I would not use that language. Speaking from my personal experience, I would just say that these dudes are hungry, man. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of guys in these leagues uh they're hungry you know they 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 from their perspective growing up and again like this not even me having the roughest background do you know what i'm saying i'm a full-blown middle-class american kid you know i went to private schools and charter schools my whole life um you know even though i lived in inglewood or wherever it's just that that was my reality that said you know being across the tracks dude for a lot of these guys they they feel like they only have a certain set of options um, and still making the pro athlete route is, we all know, a lottery ticket. They're hungry, man. Like, this this is their chance to, you know, literally make something of themselves, make their families proud, um, not grow up in, you know, what is American poverty and squalor. I think that's, I think that's the, I think that's the big, just a highly, highly, highly competitive pool. Like, I think that's what's happening. There's so many dudes I know personally that are amazing football and basketball players and will die without any wing outside of their neighborhood knowing it because, you know, like mm. workouts, the opportunities didn't line up. So yeah, more, more than anything, I, I think, I think that's, I think that's probably the thing, man. You got people feeling like, yeah, this is my life. You know how it is. We've all seen fights, right? You got one fighter who's maybe the champ, right? It's the Rocky story, dude. You got, the, you got the champ. And then you got the underdog. You got the long shot. You got the person stepping into that ring saying, I don't give a F because my life is already crap. If this doesn't work out for me, I don't got anything else. I'm putting it all on the line. Uh, so that, that's, I think that's a big driver. Again, mm. most. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was hoping that the black athlete were uh, athletically superior. I married a Jamaican uh, soccer player, you know, so I ended up having <laughs> – having four kids who, who come from like, they got the, the Jamaican blood in them, you know? So I was like, I was hoping, man, I was banking, I was rolling the dice and I was going to get some athletes out of that and uh, ended up with a, with a stud musician, you know, and, and some, <laughs> some beautiful kids, man. So I, I was happy. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, again, but we would all, I, I'm sure we would all agree, you know, that definitely not getting into eugenics, which is, you know, pseudoscience, but like genetics, hundred percent you know it's like somebody comes from a family of athletes this body type that body type they're 100 percent more likely to be athletes right so right, right. i think definitely athletics is transcendent across all sports brett i know you were even for sure saying like okay there's probably a really strong case that caleb dressel uh is one of the most athletic swimmers to uh to right. be through um to be coming through an olympic pool so yeah athleticism is definitely is definitely transcendental uh, that said, though, just comparing to a little bit more like a martial art, I know it takes a lot of skill to, to spin a football and to switch a basketball and to smack a baseball. Uh, that said, being biased, I, I still think this, there, there's a much higher technical skill level, um, almost to that of more like golf or, or like a martial art when we're talking about 
you know, a sport that obviously comes down to thousands, hundreds of a second. Right. Well, we got the Super Bowl of swimming coming up here. We had the Super Bowl with the two black quarterbacks faced off against each other last night. And uh, now we've got the uh, Super Bowl of swimming here, you know, uh, this week in, in the SEC championships. Uh, already people throwing out some times. Tim, Tim's thinking that Cooks will, will break that 18, go 17-9 at the SECs. Uh, it's interesting, you know, because I, I think the, the idea is to swim as fast as you possibly can, yet leave something in the tank for NCAAs, right? That's always the, the key. Um, so, you know, we'll, it'll be interesting to see what they actually do this weekend, these two guys, but going head to head kind of for the first time, Florida Gator at Tennessee Vol here. So, yeah, going to be an interesting SEC championship. Sonny, uh, from the other side of the pond, man, do you keep an eye on what's going on in college swimming? Uh, I do, but I don't think 99% of the, the UK do. Like, I love it because I just like watching racing and, you know, I've got my own comprehension of what yards times are and stuff like that. But, you know, after SECs, if I said to my swimmers, oh, did you see, you know, the showdown between Jordan Crooks and Josh Liendo? They'd be like, oh, wh what was the meet? And, yeah. you know, even NCAAs, you could probably go to any of the top programs and, Outside of a select few, the kind of guys that listen to our show and, and, and listen to your podcast, people don't know what's going on with the NCAAs. It's kind of like, yeah, it's a niche thing. And I think I think being yards is like another barrier that makes it more confusing because it's like, is is 17-9? What does that mean? Like, it's it, what does that mean, you know? Um, um, right, I even find, like, because yards is so heavily ingrained into, into the U.S., like, I uploaded a TikTok the other day of the 50 freestyle final, Jordan Crooks beating Ben Proud at World Short Course. And I titled it, like, the first time a whole heat was under 21 seconds. And, like, people are commenting, like, what? No one's even under 20. This is slow. And I'm like, no, no this is, like, the equivalent of everyone being under 19. Like, you know, this is, this is meters. So I, I think the barrier confuses people because – so many high school swimmers might just know yards. They don't do the long course season. They definitely don't do short course. And if they see a two length race, well, that can only be yards, right? It can't be a 50 meters because that's one length. So yeah. I don't know. I, I think yards confuses people um, in both directions. Right. Hey, listen, we're going to wrap up soon. So I want people in the comments to be hitting Jamal with some questions. Any question, any other questions you guys have for us? Please hit them in the comments right now. We're going to go to the comments section here. We're going to take some questions. Uh, someone someone here is, is claiming that Alex Shackle is going to be the next kind of superstar, take over from Tori and, and Claire. I think I think so too. This, this girl's talented, man, and she loves to race, and, and she's got the genetics, as we said, and she's got the coaching. You know, Chris Plum, one of the best coaches in, in uh, America, in the world, uh, high school coach doing fantastic things. I actually think we got a podcast with Chris Plum coming out tomorrow that I did uh, a year or two ago. I can't remember when it was, but it was such a great podcast and he's having such great results. We're actually going to repost it and refresh it and maybe chop it up into some clips, put that out tomorrow. But um, hit us with a couple of questions here for Jamal while he's here. Um, you know, I was oh. going to say, Jamal. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, brother. I was going to say, what does Black History Month mean to you? Yeah, for sure. That's a great question, dude. Um, that actually is a great question. You know, I really got to get, like, my my media package together for Black History Month responses. Uh, but I was yeah. <laughs> no. <clears throat> but seriously, it goes a little bit to what I was saying earlier, man. Um, not, not to be, you know, kind of like self-aggrandizing or anything like that, but dude, and I'm like a part of Black History Month now, which is yeah. kind of crazy. Uh, you know, growing up as a kid, you're seeing all these amazing big, you know, people, inventors, um, great minds and things like that. And and even just obviously, you know, Black History Month is only stretching as far um, as, 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 as African-Americans in the modern context. So, dude, I think it's just amazing. I think it's amazing. I think uh, it's just great to be drops in that bucket of history. I think it's really dope that, again, like we have these holidays and these times where we can just come and we can, quite frankly, maybe not so much celebrate, this is the word, but just recognize, you know, like recognize contributions, um, 
a hundred percent. You know, I, I would say this. You know, uh, I was riding through the city with one of my buddies. He's international, and so I was taking him around Los Angeles. And he's like, "Wow, dude, I'm curious. Like, you know, I see a little Tokyo. Um, you know, like I see Koreatown, man. I see like." You know, like, this is not PC, but, like, you know, we see, like, a little Mexico here. Uh, how come there's not really, like, a, you know, like, a little, I don't know, like, a little, like, there is a little Ethiopia, but, like, there's no little kind of, like, black section. And uh, I was just sharing with them, well, dude, that's because just, like, being a, being African-American is no different than being American. You know, uh, this this country, these people who were living in this country were here at the exact same time, there's a lot less, you know, migration after after the transatlantic slave trade, after a lot of freedom and things have been. So it's like there is no just subsect, right? Like this is truly a part of American history, and uh, you know, a lot of we already know a lot of foul things going on in our in our world, in our country, to be honest. But I do think, uh, dude, I do think this is. Uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, I think it's. I think it's one of the I think it's one of the the few things that um that kind of everyone is proud of. You know, usually you get people like, ah, oh, well, this is great, but it's like, but yeah. I, I like people embrace. I embrace black history. Yeah, yeah. You know what I love about you, and and I think I love I love the fact that you included yourself in Black History now because you totally are. You know, you've become that. And the thing that I love about you that I think anyone can learn from and, and whether you're white, black, whatever it is, but, but especially young black men or women, I think the thing that I love about you is you back yourself. You absolutely believe in yourself. You, you believe in who you are and what you stand for. And then, and, and that permeates you, that jumps off the page. You don't even know, need to say that. It, it kind of just, the way you dress tells me that you, you believe in yourself. You, you, you love yourself in the fact that I'm proud of who I am. And I'm going to I'm going to express that. So, first of all, I love that. Second of all, I love that you work hard for everything that you obtain. Nobody hands you anything, man. You work for everything and you deserve everything you get because you work hard at it. Uh, and then the third thing I love about you, man, is you put yourself out there to be uh, a leader and an example. And, and a lot of people are afraid to do that part of it. You know, they're, they're OK working hard, but they want to do it in the shadows. And you do it in a way that says, it's okay to be out here. It's okay to be one of them. It's okay to show who we are and what we can do. And you put yourself out there. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I love that about you, man. And I, I'm glad you're my friend, you know? Dude, 100% mutual, 100%. Suddenly, we don't mean to, like, cut you out of this, you know, sweet <laughs> moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, well. I appreciate that, Brad. And do you know that 100%, whoever you are, whatever color, um, again, obviously, Speaking to someone most looking like me, young black man, young black woman, yeah, confidence is everything. Who doesn't know that, right? The, one of the best-selling books of all time, The Secret. What's the secret? Confidence. Spoiler. Mm. Uh, so that for me, that goes out to my parents, man. You know, that's that's the way I was raised, uh, and and I've just had an opportunity to build and build and practice in that. But it's never too late to start. Um, yeah. and one thing you and I always connect with, man, and and we say it out here, especially when we talk about these swimmers competing and being fast and quite frankly that not being enough anymore uh to, to mm -hmm. really think a career dude um it just comes to putting yourself out there and understanding one who you are so that you can understand what it is that you're called to represent i say this all the time uh we we've lost the scope of champion and this goes beyond swimming being a champion is not about being a champion of self right being a champion means that you're championing a cause you're championing for a movement you're standing for something greater than yourself and for who you are it's not a vanity project and i think that is i think that's a brilliant way that our entire culture is shifting we're moving away from vanity projects i love i love the fastest swimmer i love the highest jumper we all do uh that said that dude, that's not long that, that's no longer enough for you to raise my kids uh you know by proxy right like you, yeah. you have standing on some true morals values and be able to effectively communicate that so no nah, shout out to you brad hawk for this platform uh, we already know the swimming community has massive respect for you as some of my homies say you keep shit real uh and and that's what people are missing bro they're, they're just missing that just some humanity man everything we love is run by these robots dude it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> So, the respect.
That's true, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on here. Seven o'clock in the morning for you, getting out of bed, doing this thing for us, man. Uh, again, it just goes to who you are and your work ethic and what you're prepared to do. Put yourself out there. We appreciate it. Sonny, I am going to give you the last word, man, because you've been sitting there for a sec. What's your thoughts on a guy like Jamal, man? What's your impressions of him? I, I can't appreciate someone like Jamal anymore just through, like, the overall presence and – I see loads of little things that Jamal's doing as well. I've seen some cool YouTube videos you've put out, you know, trying different sports and talking to different people. And I, I just, you know, what Jamal just said there about being run by robots, but that kind of just is the industry we live in. This protected, don't speak out of line, answer questions, talk back when you're asked something, you know. And I, th I think that's what we're all trying to do in our own way is, is give personality to a sport that is boring in not just – the aspect of media, but we're boring in terms of training. We're boring in terms of, you know, even racing for anyone who doesn't love swimming is like, oh, so they just dive in and they go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whoever's <laughs> winning at halfway probably wins at the end. Yeah, nine times out of ten. Like, we, 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 we suck, right? We're boring. And and without, you know, Jamal giving personality, Brett giving personality, you know, we, we won't grow. And that's like our, our hardest thing. And I think we also all benefit from people speaking honestly. Like if, if my mate Lewis had been too scared to tell Jamal that, you know, what, what the hell are you doing, man? Like this, you know, you, 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 you got to do something about, you know, what I'm seeing. And, and Lewis is a, is a straight shooter, just like Brett's a straight shooter, you know? So we, we all benefit from being honest. Right. And yeah, that's my final sentiment. Awesome. Listen, hey, Jamal, we, want, we wish you a great year, man. You're always welcome on this platform, this show. You got anything you want to uh, share with our audience? You want to you promote anything? You, you got an open invitation anytime you want it, man, all right? Cheers, brother. Thank you so much, man. I'll, I'm going to take this opportunity now. Anyone watching this, uh, whether you don't know how to swim, met someone who's, you know, who does know how to swim, do know how to swim, know about someone who's ever drowned, uh, please Come take a step, stand with me, stand with us at the Swim Uphill Foundation. Our mission is to teach 1 million people all around the world every single year how to swim. It seems like a huge number, but it's really not. It's 100% possible. We're already so close to it. We're going to be teaching a million people a year come 2028. So you really have five years to come and join and be a part of the early days of something really, really impactful. Just just a legacy, man. And, and, and that's what I, I want people to know is that... um. It's not always about being a Brett Hawk. It's not always about being a Sonny. It's not always about being a Jamal Hill. Sometimes it's about standing with the people uh, that you respect and that you believe in and helping them to build something that's going to really impact and change other people's lives for the better. So you can do that with me. You can do that with us at swimuphill.org. Thanks for dropping that in the chat. Boom. There we go. See that? Uh, you want to be a leader. That's how you do it. Now, listen, uh, we appreciate everybody hanging into this uh little chat here we love the live show we love the feedback we love the comments um we probably had 10 other things we wanted to talk about today but we didn't get to them but we'll, we'll get to them another time swimming's fun it's gonna be a fun week this week i tell you what there's gonna be some fast swimming sonny if you don't know yard swimming you better get your head into it because there's gonna be some crazy stuff going on this week men and women sec championship it's really uh, it's, it's, it's the conference. There's no other conference that's like it. They have a combined meet, and it is uh, sick fast, fiercely competitive. Going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, some really fast swimming this week and then chat about it next week. All right, boys, that's it. Peace. Catch you later, guys. Cheers.